Hello YouTube, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions and today we're going to look at how to wire these NL4FC Speakon connectors. For the last 10 years or so, these have been the default industry standard loudspeaker connectors. Before that, we used a combination of quarter inch connectors, bare wire, spade lugs, you name it. Some people even used XLR connectors for loudspeaker connections. The Speakon connector is an excellent speaker, uh, speaker connector because it's very strong, it's very safe, the pins are shrouded, and as a result, it minimizes the danger of electrical shorts or even electrocution. So let's get started. We'll begin with the tools that you're gonna need. So let's begin with the tools that you'll need to build a simple speak-on cable, one that goes between amplifier and loudspeaker. To begin with, of course, you'll need the connectors themselves. These come in a variety of different types. Um, there are speak-ons which have two, four, and eight terminals. Uh, today, we're using the NL4FC. The NL4 stands for four terminal, and the four terminal version can be used for either two or four conductor speaker cable. Uh, there is another uh, version called the NL2, but its construction is slightly different. Uh, it doesn't have the metal latch, so I've always just used the NL4s for everything. Um, NL8 is for eight conductor speaker cabling, and unless you're running a really big system, you probably won't have eight conductor speaker cables. The other thing is I recommend only using genuine Nutrix Speakon connectors. There are many knockoffs on the market today. They look like the real thing, but in practice, they just don't hold up. The strain relief is inadequate, and the plastic is of inferior quality. Remember that connectors generally are the first point of failure in any sound reinforcement system, and you don't want a $10,000 job to be jeopardized by a $10 or $15 connector. So use only genuine Nutrix loudspeaker connectors. The next thing that you'll need is the loudspeaker cable itself. Uh, today, we're gonna to be using Klotz two conductor cable, two by 2.5 millimeter. And what that means is, is that there are two conductors. Each conductor is 2.5 millimeters square in cross section. Uh, we're gonna be wiring a seven meter cable for some monitor sends. And I recommend always using a rubber jacketed loudspeaker cable for sound reinforcement use. You'll see a lot of loudspeaker cable that has a sort of gray PVC outer covering. And that is intended for installation use because it pulls smoothly through a conduit. Um, it doesn't coil up well and it has a tendency to not lie flat. So I do not recommend that for live sound. Now let's talk about some of the tools that you'll need. Uh, obviously, You'll need something to cut the cable. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, dedicated cable cutters out there. Uh, I have always used pruning shears. Uh, that's what we use in Singapore. And the advantage of those is, is that they cut the cable uh, very cleanly and they give you a nice clean cut on the end. Always make sure that your cable cutters are sharp and that you look after them because if they're not sharp, they won't give a clean cut on the end of the cable. Uh, you'll need some kind of wire stripper. We'll be using this for the inside conductors. To strip the outer jacket, uh, I'm gonna use a utility knife. Um, you can use uh, a wire stripper. The problem with using a wire stripper is finding one which will accommodate the gauge of the outside of the jacket. Um, with practice, you can use a utility knife to strip the cabling without cutting through the insulation on the inside, which is very important. Finally, you'll need a screwdriver uh, with a number one posi drive bit to tighten up the terminals on the inside. The terminals are actually a posi drive terminal, but lacking that, you can use a number one or number two Phillips instead. 
Uh, the posi drive just gives you a really nice tight fit which allows you to put a lot of torque on the terminals so that they don't come loose. Finally, I recommend using blue Loctite, just the drop on the terminal screws to keep them from coming loose. In the old days, we used to solder all of our Speakon cabling. Um, you can if you really, really want to be sure that they never come loose. But the way the conductors are, the way the connectors are built now, they have an excellent strain relief and I haven't found this to be a problem as long as you tighten the internal terminals properly and as I said use a little bit of Loctite. Alright, let's begin. So the first step in the process would be to prep the ends of the cabling. Obviously you'll have cut your cable to length. The next thing that you'll need to do is you will need to strip off the outer jacket. Now with the Speakons, the directions say that you have to strip off 25 millimeters or about one inch of the outer rubber jacketing. Now the way that I do this is with a utility knife and how I work is I look at the orientation of the internal conductors so I know that they are lying this way which means that I can actually make a very shallow cut using my utility knife into the outer jacketing there. And what I do is, as you can see there, right, I've cut through the outside insulation, but I haven't cut through the inside insulation, and that's really important. Then just with a, with a very uh, delicate touch, you run your blade around the outside. Again, you want to be careful not to cut through to the inside. And don't cut yourself, obviously. You'll find that bending it around your finger like that really helps because it helps to spread uh, the internal jacket. Right? And after a bit of wiggling, you'll find that that pops off and you want a nice uh, clean cut, as you can see there, with the internal conductors exposed. Okay, the next step is with your wire cutters, you, excuse me, with your wire strippers, you want to strip off about 1 cm or 10 millimeters of the inside, uh, the inside insulation. Now, on this one, as you can see, I've got some graduations there. I happen to know that I'm working with roughly 16 gauge cable, so I'll use the 16 gauge. All right, that comes off. Again, when you do this, uh, be gentle and you don't want to cut through any of the internal uh, conductors. Uh, the reason for this is that if you cut through them, you will occasionally get tiny slivers of copper floating around inside the connector, which can cause shorts. Then you just twist the inside together uh, I know some engineers who they like to come in with a soldering iron and they'll tin uh, these conductors so that when they go into the connector, they don't spread apart. You can do that if you want to. All right, so we've prepared this end. Uh, obviously, if I were doing this for real, I'd prep both ends or if I were doing a batch, I'd prep a whole bunch. But um, in this case, we're not. Next step is to open up our bag here and within the bag you'll have a number of different things. You'll have the end cap which I straight away slide over the outside of the cabling. Very important. Nothing like doing the conduct, uh, doing the connector all up nicely and then realizing you've forgotten to put that on. You will have the, the actual uh, body of the connector there which has the terminals on one end and the pins on the other and then you'll have the body sleeve there which has the latch on top. You will also be given two strain reliefs right so you'll have a white strain relief and you'll have a black strain relief. The difference between them is the diameter right. The white strain relief is for smaller cabling and the black strain relief is for larger cabling. Exactly which one you use depends on the thickness of your cable. 
the way that you check is you take your cable and you feed it into the strain relief. Now, as you can see there with the black strain relief, there's a huge amount of space. So that's not the right one for this application. The white one, on the other hand, there's just a small amount of space. So we'll use that, okay? The next step would be to identify the correct terminals that we're going to use here. Now, it's a little bit hard to see, but on the Nutrix Speakon, you have four terminals and they are titled plus one, minus one, plus two, and minus two. Now, when you look at the conductor, you can see that there are little numbers here and plus one and minus one are always on one side. And then if you flip it over, you'll have plus two and minus two on the other side. The standard wiring configuration is plus one and minus one. Plus two and minus two are only used for four conductor cabling, right? So we want to identify, yep, I have my, this is plus one and this one down here is minus one. The next thing is to undo those terminals all the way with my screwdriver, right? I'm just opening them up. Uh, obviously, if you uh, go too far, they'll fall out, the screws will fall out, so don't do that, okay? Then I'm gonna put a, just a drop of Loctite, a very, very small amount onto the exposed threads. Right, so we'll put one there. You'll see I'm just using a tiny amount and sometimes the Loctite doesn't want to behave. There we go, just a small amount, okay? I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer here so that you can see what's going on. All right, so now you can see that you've got a red and a blue conductor. Sometimes you'll have a red and a white. Convention is that red is always plus one or plus two. In this case, it's plus one and blue is always minus, right? So red, hot and blue, cold. I like to bend these so that they are approximately the same distance apart as the distance between the terminals there. Then what I'll do is I just feed them straight in. This, this bit is a little bit hard to see, so I'll try and do it there. So I just feed them in, right? And I think you can see there, right? And once they're in, you wanna hold the conductor like this so that they don't fall out. And then with your tool, you want to tighten down on those locking screws. How tight should you make them? Typically, I'll make them hand tight, snug, right? So don't want them too tight because you'll crush the conductor on the inside. Okay, that's how it should look when it's wired up. Plus one and minus one. Then what I'll do is I'll wait a little while, probably 30 seconds to let the metal settle and then I'll tighten a little bit more, okay? You don't have to go Conan the Barbarian on these, just snug will do. After that, take your strain relief. The strain relief has a little cutout in it, which means that if you forget to slip it on, that's fine. So we just slip it over the cabling there. And then you need to align the strain relief with the body of the connector. You can see there are some cutouts there. They need to match the lugs on the um, body of the connector. Then we take our sleeve, which has the latch on it, and you go into the threaded end, like so. 
and then you just screw the end cap on. Now, you'll hear a series of clicks as you do this, and there is actually a ratcheting system here that prevents the end cap from backing off. It's a really good design. Right? And you'll notice that there are a couple of slots cut out here. You can actually use a 15 millimeter spanner on those, but I personally, I just do it up by hand, right? Again, you do it up until it's snug, and then give it one more. All right, depending on the size of the cabling that you're using, you may have more or less of a gap here. Um, that's pretty much it, okay? On the latest version, you can see you have a small recessed area here. That is actually intended for a sticky label, or you can do like we used to do for years and write on it with a paint marker or even uh, correction fluid. The earlier Speakons were gray, so it was easier to write on them with a Sharpie. These new ones are now black, which makes it a bit more difficult. So that's it. That's how you wire a simple uh, Speakon cable and L4 FC conductors. Um, things to watch out for, obviously, are to make sure that you put the end cap on first before you make up the uh, connections inside and make sure that when you strip the outer jacketing, you don't cut through the inside insulation as well. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.